diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, as you heard, in 1995 at the age of 43. I'm now 60 years old. 17 years with Parkinson's seems like a really long time. My wife, Anne, known to her friends as AJ, who is here today, was also diagnosed with Parkinson's in 1995 at the age of 36. We met in 1999 as contributors to an online bulletin board for people with neurological diseases. As a couple, AJ and I decided early on that we wanted to make a difference in the fight against Parkinson's. The Parkinson's Action Network, with its emphasis on patient advocacy and direct political action, led by its charismatic founder, Joan Samuelson, whom you all know, attracted us both. Over the years, we've worked with the Parkinson's Disease Foundation, the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research, and in various regional and ad hoc efforts, including the efforts to legalize stem cell research in California, to pass Proposition 71, and to establish the California Parkinson's Disease Registry. But our primary association has always been with PAN, whose mission is to educate federal government officials and lawmakers about issues of importance to the Parkinson's community, especially the need for increased research funding. PAN and the Parkinson's community have been at the forefront of the fight against restrictions on the freedom of scientists to work with embryonic stem cells. PAN is a founding member of CAMR and is currently engaged in the defense of federal funding for embryonic stem cell research in the case of Shirley versus Sibelius, which was just heard on appeal a couple of weeks ago. As you all know too well, the importance of the freedom of researchers to use stem cells, whether embryonic, IPS, or adult, cannot be overstated. To give just one example, the use of embryonic and IPS cells has been essential to the development of new disease models, allowing researchers to observe in the lab how such cells as neurons progress from their embryonic state and what may or may not go wrong in those cells that can lead to diseases like Parkinson's. 14 years of active advocacy on behalf of the Parkinson's community has taught us that this disease is far more complex and resistant to significant therapeutic treatment than we could ever have imagined in 1999. Although Adrian and I continue to hope that several promising therapies short of a cure may reach the market in time to be of value to uh, those of us with what is now advanced Parkinson's disease, a cure is still a long way off. We know that we're living on borrowed time. But we also know that we have our, the time that we've already borrowed has been made possible by the hard work of researchers such as Dr. Stephen Connolly, whom you just heard, who are making substantial strides and have greatly increased our understanding of the disease and the development of possible new therapies. The prognosis for PD patients is no longer, in the words of Dr. Lucien Cote of Columbia, diagnose and adios as it was before the introduction of carbidopa levodopa in the mid-1970s. In addition, the last decade has seen an explosion in the increase in number and influence of those in the Parkinson's patient advocacy community. PAN's grassroots advocacy program has recruited hundreds of volunteers in the fight against Parkinson's disease. Every year, PAN's advocates go to Washington for what we call Hill Day, where advocates meet with their representatives and senators on Capitol Hill to educate them about issues of importance to the Parkinson's community. Hill Day is a hard day for patients. Pan asks a lot of its advocates. We ask them to tell complete strangers in a public setting about some of the most difficult and personal aspects of their lives, their struggles, their fears, their hopes. It is not an easy thing to ask. Yet year after year, patients and those who love them rise to the occasion and reveal the damaged and disabled people who exist just under the chemical costume of medications and therapies that help them disguise the worst of their symptoms and function with at least some success in the everyday world. This year, Pan has introduced a new program to recruit young Parkinson's research scientists to partner with patient advocates on the Hill and at home supporting the patient stories 
with the hard facts of their research and the funding that they need to continue it. AJ and I participated in the launch of this program in February, and I can tell you that it made for a dramatic one-two punch in congressional offices all over the Hill. Patients and research scientists working together as partners in advocacy made the argument for increased funding most compelling. As I said earlier, 17 years is a long time down the road with Parkinson's. But I think that along with making everyday life increasingly difficult, Parkinson's has also given AJ and I opportunities we might not otherwise have had to better understand what is important in life and what is not, to appreciate the inclination toward goodwill, kindness, and decency that exists in most people, to never lose one's sense of humor, and to retain one's sense of wonder and curiosity, to forbear from judging ourselves and others by external attributes, and to see in others and to cultivate in ourselves the strength, patience, and inner grace needed to live a full life with this serious chronic disease. On behalf of myself and Pan, I would like to acknowledge the members of the board and the staff here at CIRM, as well as many research scientists like Dr. Connolly, for their hard work and dedication in the fight to discover new treatments and therapies for Parkinson's. You have made the promise of Proposition 71 a working reality. And that is bringing and will continue to bring benefits to AJ, to me, and to patients around the world. Thank you.